Hey bag maker, today we're going to be talking about the zipper jig, various fabrics that I've added to my stash. The book will, review will be for a great um, book called The English Paper Piecing Workshop. I'll be demonstrating how to use and clean the Martelli, Martelli Ergonomic Rotary Cutter and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. I see Wendy's watching, Andrea from Ohio, Mary Jo from Michigan. So welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. And uh, just a friendly reminder before I get started, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So tonight for dinner, we had pancakes. So breakfast for dinner. I've been making this recipe for a couple of years now. It's for, I found on the internet, a recipe for McDonald's copycat pancakes or hotcakes. And uh, I've linked to that recipe in the description in case you're interested in checking that out. And it does taste very similar to the McDonald's hotcakes. Sometimes um, if I'm feeling it, I add a little bit of extra um, vanilla extract to it, but otherwise the recipe as is, is fantastic. And usually for the four of us, especially since Violet is not super crazy about pancakes, I usually make a half a batch, um, but you could make a full batch as well. And um, if I ever have any extra batter, I just put it in the fridge for um, a couple of days later. Um, what else? Exciting demonstrations for tonight. A couple of notions that I'm going to talk about. Um, one of them being, um, Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera really quick. So you may whoa, remember, whoa, whoa, whoa. did I forget something? No, we're going to start over, sir. Mm. Three, two, one. Okay, so you may remember from last year when I was talking about using the towel holder to attach uh, zipper pulls to your zipper tape. Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera so I can show you what that looks like in case you missed it. So this is that towel holder and I, had, I just attached mine to a drink coaster. And what this does is it holds your zipper pulls so that you can um, attach the zipper tape. So this still works fantastic, definitely. Um, I'm not replacing it because it doesn't work, but I am replacing it um, at least in, in my sewing room with this actual zipper jig meant for a uh, zipper pull. So this is actually uh, an actual sewing notion that I came upon recently. And I really like it because it has a little slot. Let's see if I can, there you go. You can probably see the little slot on the left says number three and the slot on the right says number five. It'll also fit number four and a half zipper pulls. But I like this because, well, it's got like a little Mm, pad on the bottom. It is rather lightweight, but I found it was great because it wasn't exactly moving around on me when I was trying to attach the zipper pulls. So I thought I would demonstrate uh, both the two sizes of zipper pulls. Um, I've got my number three over here, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in so that the wrong side is facing me and then the flat edge is uh, at the bottom. So it just kind of drops in there just like that. There's what it looks like on the inside, uh, on the front. And I've got my number three zipper tape and I'm just gonna go ahead and separate a little bit. Of course, you always wanna make sure you have a straight edge first uh, before you do that. And if not, you can just trim with your scissors. And um, I've got the wrong side of the zipper tape face up. Here's the right side, face down. And I usually like to kind of make a little um, V with my zipper tape as it's going into the, the pull and then just pull each side down. So. If you happen to pull the tape down and you notice the edges aren't even, you can go ahead and um, just remove the tape and give it another go. And the nice thing about the zipper tape is also you can attach opposing pulls, um, which I've demonstrated in past videos, but I'll do it really quick for the, the number three zipper. So to attach opposing pulls, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off add a second pull and then it's going to go in the opposite direction. So you want the two um, curved edges um, touching each other and the flat edges away from each other. Thanks, Danny. 
Okay, so that's how to get uh, the opposing pulls attached. And so let me demonstrate the, the number five. Same thing, I've got a couple number five zippers over here. Um, this is the biggest one that I usually use. This is the hollow pull from our shop. And here's my number five zipper tape. And nice and easy, just kind of slides on here. I did notice in the product listing for this zipper jig that it doesn't work with YKK zippers, but I did happen to have this uh, by Annie's zipper by the yard, which is number 4.5 zippers. And I, I didn't notice until after I tried this, but it is a YKK zipper, so it just kind of sits in there. I'm not saying that this will work with all YKK zippers, even though um, the product listing says that it won't, but um, you can certainly uh, give it a shot. Obviously don't buy it if you only have YKK zippers, but um, really great to use. Um, nice thing if you don't currently have a zipper jig in your sewing room, nice thing to have. Um, of course, um, the forks, which I've demonstrated in the past, the forks work as well, but um, link to this tool is in the description in case you're interested in finding out more about that zipper jig. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. How do you normally store your zippers? Either if you're using store-bought zippers cut to a certain length or if you're using zippers by the yard, let me know in the comments. Perhaps you have a special drawer, maybe a couple plastic containers and you kind of roll them and put them in the containers. Let me know in the comments how you normally store your zippers. So um, the zipper jig and the Martelli rotary cutter that I'll be talking about later are part of our monthly drops. On the first of every month, I'm going to be um, coming out with new products every month. And those are sort of a sneak peek. I know it's not June 1st yet, but um, I wanted to, I guess, demonstrate those products early and there will be additional products. Um, you can find the information on the monthly drops, um, the So Sweetness First, um, by signing up for the newsletter if you're not already subscribed. The uh, internet address uh, to do so is uh, right down there and it's sosweetness.com backslash newsletter. And all we need from you is your email address and you'll be signed up every time uh, we come out with new products. Uh, we send uh, an email newsletter out maybe about a couple times a month or so. Um, I know at the beginning of this month we had more than two newsletters just because um, I wanted to let everyone know about the four pack video bundle, but our normal schedule is about two ish uh, newsletters sent out every month. So new fabric that I've added to my stash. Um, very excited about this new fabric from Rifle Paper Company because I've used a similar fabric on the Cumberland backpack in the past. So Danny's going to switch over to the overhead camera. So it's not exactly the same as the fabric that I used on my Cumberland backpack, but actually I like it better because there's less negative space. And for bag making, a lot of times, um, unless you're using a panel or something of that nature, um, I like having the space in the fabric filled in with not so much uh, background or negative space. So this is, let me see if I can perhaps open it a little bit bigger. There's all sorts of uh, destinations on the fabric. There we go, so there's some more on there. So uh, really great. I think this came in a black background as well, um, but I, I just really liked the, the cream color background because I felt everything all the destinations really popped. And I also picked up from the same fabric line this um, sort of sketchy looking stripe. This, it looks really dark, but this is actually a navy stripe. I thought it would go with maybe a side panel for a bag made with this with the main fabric. And then they had um, some prints with postage stamps, which I thought were really cool. I'm not sure, maybe a smaller project like a pouch. And this one is sort of a light gray background. There are some metallics in these fabrics, such as this uh, postage stamp uh, right over here. That's metallic. And this one's a navy background. The orange background is really awesome, really pops. And then I didn't pick up every single print from the fabric line, but I did get a lot of the main prints. And here's another um, print with some destinations. And then finally, I thought this would be good for lining. Um, this came in a few different colorways, but I kind of liked the lighter gray. 
Um, so I thought I would use that for a lining. And then the second set of fabrics are these really cool watercolor tone fabrics that I picked up. Um, really interesting. Um, lots of areas of the fabric look really unique. And sort of, I don't know if it would be considered an ombre effect, but as you can see, the shades of purple kind of vary as you go um, throughout the fabric. And then I picked it up in the other colorways as well. So I think uh, it's hard to choose a favorite because every time I think, um, oh yeah, this this is the green one's my favorite or the purple one's my favorite, then I sort of change my mind. So um, even the gray, I, I at first I didn't expect to purchase any of the gray, but I thought it would be a really great... Uh, I guess neutral looking bag because of the colors. Um, here's a navy blue one. Let me open this one out a little bit. Yeah, so as you can see, it's like lighter and then it goes into the darker colors, which looks really awesome. Gives you also choices for, um, I guess, fussy cutting the, the tone of the color that you prefer. And then this one's sort of a raspberry color and then goes into sort of a, a watermelon color pink with the, the lime green on the bottom. So I've linked to all the fabrics in the description in case you're interested in checking them out after the show. Um, while we are speaking of that Rifle Paper Company fabric with all of the different destinations on it, I wanted to ask you, and you can type this in the comments, um, what's the best uh, trip you've ever been on? So. Let me know. I know some of you travel extensively and maybe others like myself don't travel a whole lot, but let me know your favorite trip you've ever been on. Uh, I'm a Disney girl, so I really love going to Disney World and I'd be happy just going to Disney World all the time, to be honest. I don't know if Danny would be as pleased with that, that type of trip all the time, but um, certainly I love going to Disney. So um, the Blazing Star So Long, we're, we're now entering, as of today, week number two of the sew along. It's a four week sew along. So, um, Danny's going to put the schedule up on the screen. And um, there's still time to enter week one. So, if you're just jumping on a little bit late, um, you have plenty of time. Um, the blog posts for week one and week two are in the description, and you can enter your um, photos um, of your completion steps up until that step. Um, in the blog post, and there are prizes for each week of the so long. Um, you actually have two weeks to enter um, each week's task. And Danny's going to put up another screenshot on the screen. Um, when you go to the blog post, um, if you scroll down, you'll see all those little thumbnails of the images that people have entered as their entries for the so long. Um, sorry, can you put it up one more second, Danny? See that little. Um, place on the bottom I circled in red, you are next, click here to enter. That's where you'll click to enter your photo. We discovered over the weekend that some browsers, um, mainly we tested Firefox and it seems like Firefox is having an issue. Um, yep, that's it right there. Um, if you normally use Firefox as your browser, um, perhaps try to open up the blog posts in a different browser, such as Google Chrome or Safari. I know there's plenty of other browser choices out there um, because we noticed Firefox is not showing this area, not showing the thumbnails when you pull up the blog posts. Um, if you don't have another browser that you use, um, as always, you can feel free to email us directly your um, progress photo that serves as your entry for the so long and we'll be happy to post it for you. Um, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H and that's where you can send your progress photo. So if you don't, if you go to the blog post and you don't see that little link where you can enter your photo, don't stress out and don't spend um, a lot of time looking for it. Um, if you notice right away that you don't see it or you're not sure how to enter your photo, just feel free to email it to us right away and we'll get that photo posted for you. Uh, let's see. Oh, now we can uh, get on to the book review. So the book review for today is for a book called uh, The English Paper Piecing Workshop. I really was drawn to this book immediately because of the bright, fun colors on the cover. And so Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera and I will show you the projects in the book. So as for every sewing or craft book, the beginning portion of the book is uh, the techniques, how to do the basics, how to English paper piece, um, how to attach uh, your fabric to the cardstock or whatever um, backing fabric that you're using. So there's a few pages of full color 
illustration showing how to do that and then it, the book jumps right into the project. So I would say I have two favorite projects in this book um, and this is one of them. So I really, really, really love this. I love just the spinning colors and it just has a lot of visual interest for me. Um, and I'm, there's what I also like about this book is there's a mixture of small and large projects such as this uh, lampshade which gives you an opportunity to try a little bit of English paper piecing without making such a huge project because sometimes uh, you know the the quilts especially if you're sewing them by hand take quite a long time to put together so this one's a table runner and then um, other small projects like this mini quilts mini quilts are also great to use uh, to decorate your sewing room to hang on the wall So I think a lot of Allison Glass fabrics used uh, in this book, which I really like. Here's another one of the, the bed quilts in the book. And I noticed that the options in the book are, I thought were really great because it seems like some of the blocks could possibly be sewn by machine, but um, the option to sew them by hand is given in the instructions, which is really nice because sometimes if you're out and about traveling, perhaps waiting in the car, um, pulling out the English paper piecing is something really nice uh, to work on, or perhaps you're going on vacation and you just like to in the evening relax and work on some English paper piecing while you're in your hotel room or at the beach or the pool. So um, this is a nice option for taking your sewing uh, wherever you're going without necessarily taking your machine. So um, the obligatory hexagon shape, which is um, I think a lot of people when they think of English paper piecing, definitely hexagons have to be in there somewhere. And then a three-dimensional project in here, uh, a storage bucket. And then I think we're getting, yes, uh, here's my other favorite quilt in the book. Um, Love the colors, love the stars, just love this project. And then there's a few more left, but I, I was surprised at how many projects are in this book. There's quite a lot for a sewing or quilting book. And then I think this one's the last one. So all of the templates for the pieces are in the back of the book and you just can photocopy them at actual size. And again, this book is English Paper Piecing Workshop by Jenny Jackson and the link to the book is in the description in case you're interested in checking it out after the show. So Danny's favorite part of the show, when he's not on the show, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad and Danny and I are both so grateful that you're here and thank you so much for tuning in to Social Sunday. So let me get my things set up for the second demonstration of the night. I think I got everything over here. Okay. You All ready? Right. Yes, I'm ready, Danny. Three, two, one. All right, so today I'm super excited to talk about the Martelli ergonomic rotary cutter. I think we're all familiar with rotary cutters that look like this, and I think I didn't realize until I started using the, the rotary cutter from Martelli that um, when you cut with this kind of ruler, your arm is kind of twisted over here. So I don't historically have issues with aches or pains in my hands or wrists, but I can definitely say that cutting out fabric for a quilt, especially if I'm cutting out lots of pieces for lots of blocks, being in this position um, over an extended period of time, no matter who you are, can take a toll and make this uh, wrist area feel uh, the tension. And so I've got this Martelli rotary cutter to share with you. So Danny's gonna switch to the overhead camera the Martelli rotary cutters come in different sizes. I think as quilters, we're most familiar with uh, 45 millimeters. They also come in, I um, also have their 60 millimeter, um, and they also come in a smaller 28 millimeter, but we're gonna be talking about the 45 millimeter here. And you'll notice that I have one in the package with a blue handle and one with a red handle. So. The blue handle is um, a left hand cutter and the red handle is a right hand cutter. So I th thought it was brilliant that both uh, right handed and left handed are represented. If you're using uh, with your right hand, you're kind of gripping this like so. And if you're using the left hand, you're holding it like this. So 
basically just the opposite and you get the benefits uh, whether using the left-handed or the right-handed. So I'm gonna put the left-handed one to the side for now. And first I'm going to show you how it cuts and then I'm going to show you how to change the blade because when I first got this, it seemed rather daunting to me, but now that I've used it a few times, it's kind of a no-brainer. So I've got a fat quarter over here and I'm, I've got it folded. So I'll be cutting through four layers of fabric. So the cool thing about using this ergonomic rotary cutter is before with this other one, I'm not saying this is a bad rotary cutter. I'm just saying before with this one, I really could never cut sitting down because I think I just couldn't get enough leverage to cut the fabric, even if it was one or two layers of fabric. But with um, this one, and I'm, it's got a blade guard, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, I actually can cut sitting down and I, I don't have to lean into it as, far, as hard as I used to using a different uh, rotary cutter. So I'm gonna flip this so we've got eight layers of fabric and let's see if it cuts just as well with the eight layers because I know sometimes we want to cut with more layers just to get uh, the process over with. So yeah, it cuts through a lot of layers. I will say Martelli rates this rotary cutter, the blades lasting three to five times as long. And because I've only had this uh, rotary cutter a couple of months, I, I can't speak on that fact, but um, I feel like I kind of want to trust that it's true because it's on the packaging. But I guess I'll let you know when I've used this. Maybe um, after I've had this in use for a year, I can speak better to that. But um, let me show you, now I've shown you how it cuts. Let me show you how to change the blade. Before we get over to that, um, let me show you the positioning for right-handed one more time. So your thumb can go on the side, your four fingers, three fingers will grip the handle, and then you can place your index finger on this uh, acrylic portion over here that sticks out over here. So it does have a blade guard over here. So when this is activated, when this is all red or all blue, if, actually the blue one is, is red also. If this portion's all red, that means your blade is protected and that means uh, you can't accidentally cut your finger. Um, and it's got a little uh, lever over here. So you can either reach your finger down to uh, release the blade or you can give it sort of a test a test um, motion like that, like your test cutting and it releases a blade. Uh, so either one, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, so let me show you how to change the blade and take all the parts out in case you need to clean them. So for, first you wanna do is to release the blade. So you want this red portion over here and you want the blade exposed. Um, ask me how I know that because I was playing around before the show and I tried to do it without, with the blade uh, covered like this and sort of, I almost had a little heart attack because there's springs inside and the springs kind of started to pop out. But I thankfully I got everything back in place. So you always wanna make sure that the blade is exposed first. And there's a little notation over here. Let me hold it like this so you can see. There's an arrow going this way and it says unscrew. I have a feeling Danny might be zooming in. Um, so I'll just give him a minute to do that but it tells you right on here in red um, which direction you need to unscrew it. There you go. Yeah, see it says unscrew, and so I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew it in that direction. Danny, you can zoom back to the regular zoom, thank you. I'm going to unscrew this all the way, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put the screw to the side, and then please be so, so careful when you take the blade out. So just one finger on each side of the blade. Sometimes they're a little bit oily, so just Again, be very careful, have good lighting where you're working just to make sure nothing goes awry. And then there's a, a couple parts that can pop out. So there's a little, see this little um, acrylic um, knob over here that's sticking out. You can just take your thumb and, and as it goes flying, um, just go ahead and push that out. This is that piece right over here. And then there's sort of a little uh, flower shaped piece over here. This works to hold the blade while you're using it and this can come off as well it just it kind of just sits in this little channel over here so if there's lint inside or what have you you can use a little scrap of fabric or if you have other cleaning tools like a little brush in your sewing room you can clean these pieces if need be uh, apparently mine are not as linty yet um, just wait till I cut out some fabric for a quilt um, so to put everything back in place I'm just going to go ahead and take this little flower piece 
and sit that channel in the opening over there. You can orient it however you're most comfortable. I have a feeling once you change the blade a few times, you'll realize which side of the flower piece you prefer if you like to have it like this or if you prefer to have it like this. Um, so you'll figure out what works best for you. And then this piece kind of sits back in this channel. There's sort of a channel with cutouts and it just kind of fits into place. And then you can take your finger and push that plastic piece uh, back into place and it'll just snap. So when you put the blade back in, again, be super careful uh, putting the blade back in. You want the blade to fit in between that little flower piece and this large piece with the notch. So it's gonna go, it's gonna sit in between those two and they're kind of snug. So what I do when I put it back in is I kind of look for one of the flower pieces, which is this right here. And I kind of try to get it in between um, the, gap. the gap. Thank you, Danny. And again, be very careful because you know, you're, you've got a blade in your hand. There you go. Once you get it going, it kind of just slides easily into position and you just want to get it as close to covering that opening as you can. Cause once the screw gets back into place, it kind of moves everything back in place. So to unscrew it, uh, the arrow is going this way. So we want to do it the opposite direction. And again, keep your fingers, be very careful until we are able to um, put that blade guard back on. Um, but as you can see, nothing to be scared about as far as replacing the blades. Um, I thought there might be some questions about if other blades besides the Martelli blades fit. Um, and so I've got my Ulfa cutter out here. I have the Ulfa endurance blades. So I just thought to compare the sizes, let me take this out one more time um, at a quicker speed than I did before, just so we can compare the two blades. Okay, so they look about the same to me. Um, I'm assuming this one would be able to fit in as well. However, like I mentioned, Martelli rates um, their blades to last three to five times as longer. So I'm gonna give that a try and stick with some Martelli blades for a while. I just ordered some new ones. So um, while I have this blade over here, Danny, were there any questions in the comments about um, this rotary cutter that I can perhaps answer. You can switch back to the, the front camera. Thank you, Danny. Actually, I'll, I'm going to leave that blade out because I don't want to have my focus on the camera and the blade as well. Carrie wants to know, does the Martelli cutter work well with stripology rulers or similar? That's a great question, and I did have that on my outline, um, but I forgot to mention it or test it out. So let me get this blade back in. Give me two seconds to do that. And then I'll pull out my Stripology ruler because I have several of them. Uh, these are the Stripology rulers from GE Designs. All right, let me move that other blade out of the way. Let me just pop off my chair and pull out the Stripology ruler. Okay. Okay, so if you've never, oh, thank you, Cindy. Cindy says, do they, yes, they do work with the Stripology ruler. So this is the smallest of the Stripology rulers that I own. And Danny's going to switch back to the overhead camera. So the nice thing about the Stripology rulers is the blade fits in these little notches over here. And then you cut out strips of fabric. So for instance, if you need to cut out for your quilt a bunch of one inch strips, you would cut zero, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever increment you need um, to cut out. Let me grab my little scrap of fabric over here. Okay, so as you can see, it cut out those one inch strips for me. Um, so it does work with the, the Stripology ruler or if you have a similar, I think June Taylor has one as well, um, a big square one. Um, thank you for those questions. Um, Carla says, do you sell the blades for the Martelli cutter? Um, we're actually out of stock on the blades. We do have the cutters. I have the 45 millimeter in the right hand and we have some of the left hand ones as well. The left hand ones are the ones with the blue handles. Um, we should have the replacement blades in stock soon. Uh, we'll have them in five packs, five, pla five pack blades. And um, like I said, the blades last for an awful long time. So you should be okay before you need to start uh, replacing the blades, uh, which is nice. So 
just really excited uh, for using this. Let me know in the comments if you already have uh, this Martelli cutter and what you think about it. Uh, Tamara says, I use the size 45 millimeter Martelli blades in my other rotary cutters and they do last longer. Thank you so much for that, Tamara. Uh, nice to hear feedback about the blades uh, for, from someone who's had them for an extensive period of time. And RGV Texas says, use a pair of needle nose pliers to insert or take out the blade. Thank you for that. That's a great, a great tip. Idea. Danny, do we have any of those yes, in the house? No. Okay, awesome. You can use any pliers. There's nothing you need them with. Okay. All right, so uh, that's the demonstration for the cutter. I, I'm really excited to add this to my uh, sewing arsenal. I don't use rotary cutters as much when I'm making a bag, um, but I use them obviously a ton for making quilts and other smaller projects. All right, uh, so I'm going to be answering some questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, it can be a bag making question, question about a notion or tool, general sewing question, go ahead and type your question in the comments right now on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you watch our show. Uh, before we get over to uh, the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. And that winner is Desi Hart 3114. So congratulations to Desi Hart. Please email me after the show so that I can get you connected with your prize. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com, sarah with no H. And there will be another giveaway at the end of the show. All right, Danny, take it away with the questions. Great question from Joan. Joan says, what is a YKK zipper? YKK is just a brand of zipper. Um, if you go to your local fabric or big box store, you might notice that a lot of the zippers um, are possibly the YKK brand. And Danny, can you switch to the overhead camera for just one second? They generally say, let me see if I can, no. Danny, can you zoom in? Please, thank you. See on the zipper pull, it says YKK. That's how you know it's a YKK zipper. It usually will say and be printed on the zipper pull. Thanks, Danny. Um, Jerry says, can you iron over metallic prints? Um, I do have a few that I got recently. Let me pull them out. I don't know if you mean something like this with metallic, the roses are all metallic, the roses are all metallic print. Um, I have ironed them on, ironed over the right side of the fabric in the past and I haven't had an issue. Um, However, if you're nervous about it, you can always iron on the wrong side of the fabric, even when attaching interfacing, or um, if it's something you're nervous about, you can al also finger press when you're assembling things such as a bag or even quilt blocks. Um, Eileen says, no, your finger doesn't get sore. My fingers are arthritic and it is valuable. Oh, I'm assuming there was a question about if your finger gets sore from um, holding it in place. Um, yeah, I, sh I should also mention that, Danny, can you switch to the overhead camera for just one second? My finger, I, when I was cutting the fabric, I wasn't like putting a lot of pressure on this piece over here. It's just sort of more or less resting over here. So your hand over here it, that's holding this red handle is kind of what's driving the, the motion for cutting. So I'm not using a lot of pressure like pushing down. It's just sort of like pushing like forward, if that makes sense. Uh, Marsha says, does it come with just one blade? Yes, uh, the cutter in the packaging comes with one blade and the blade is already um, on the rotary cutter. So the first time you use it, you don't have to do anything with putting the blade in or taking it out. You only need to do that when you need to replace the blades or when you need to clean inside um, the clear um, holder. Suzanne says, can the Percheron pouch have mesh pockets in the lid? Um, yeah, you should be able to. And I do have a free video on my YouTube channel um, you can find it by going to the So Sweetness YouTube channel and in the search box, um, kind of a quarter down and on the right hand side usually, you can type in uh, mesh pocket and that should come up and that's for a mesh zippered pocket um, and generally you can adapt that to whatever project you're working on. Patty says YKK is Yoshida. I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but yes, that's the manufacturer. Thank you for that, Patty. 
Valerie says, a substitute for Decoville Light or Decoville Heavy. That's a great question. And I actually have a more detailed response to that. I'll give my quick response here, but I do have a video on my YouTube channel. You can just type in in the So Sweetness channel Decoville and that video should come up. It's a comparison, um, not comparison, but talking about Decoville Light and Decoville Heavy and what kinds of applications you'd use it for and what types of projects. Um, there is a really close substitute to, to Decoville Light. Um, I feel like Pellon Decor Bond, which is number 809, is very close. Not exactly the same, but very close to Decoville Light. Decoville Heavy is kind of its own its own beast, uh, if you will. Um, it is an ultra firm interfacing, but I feel like it's different enough from Peltex. Um, they're often used um, as substitutes for one another, but I feel like the Decoville Heavy is thinner um, and just, it just has a different feel to the Decoville, or to the Pellon Peltex. So um, check out my uh, Decoville comparison video if you'd like to um, after the show. Um, Gail says, does that cutter cut curves easily too? Oh, I, I'm trying to think if I have a, it should, it shouldn't be any different than, I'm trying to think if, Danny, do you feel like you could talk for a second? Do you have your podcast mic set up? I'm going to jump and try to grab a curved, uh, acrylic really quick. So I'll be back in a second. So as the tail turns. Sarah will be back shortly. Sarah, can we move it a little quicker, please? <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I could find with curves is this uh, classic curves ruler from Color Girl Quilts, and it's similar to the Stripology ruler with the, the cutouts. So it's not exactly what I was looking for, but, I mean, it serves the same purpose, so... Let's see, throw my fabric on here. And I think I'll turn my ruler a little bit to the side so I can get this in here. So, yeah, if I can just hold my ruler a little bit better, it would be great. Yeah, I can cut curves, uh, cut my curves over here. So yeah, it can cut curves as well, whether you have a, a ruler like this or actual like just curved, you know, solid templates. Joy says, I was wanting the acrylic ruler for the Park Sling bag that I thought was once available. Uh, we're, not, we're no longer selling the acrylic template for the Park Sling backpack, but email me and I'm happy to help you out with that. Uh, my email is sarah at soulsweetness.com. Uh, Millie says, did you say the M blades will fit other cutters? Um, oh, I don't know about that. I guess I hadn't tried that. Um, let me see. I'm going to take out my Martelli. I only have this one Martelli blade in the cutter. I don't have the replacement cutters. So let me just pull that out really quick. So this is my Ulfa rotary cutter. Let's see if this fits inside. Do you want a pair of pliers? Uh, no, that's okay. Feels like it fits. Seems like it fits. Yeah, so that's the Martelli blade. I just stuck it in my Ulfa really quick just to see if it would fit. All right. Okay. Um, when choosing a lining, do you look for a color in your main fabric or use a coordinating print from the same range or do you do something different? I always keep second guessing myself. So actually my favorite thing to do and probably what I do maybe 80 or 90% of the time is I will get, say for instance, I want to use this cherry print, which I've got, if Danny could switch to the overhead camera. So I pulled this off the side of my table. So you can see the colors in the fabric, but most of the time manufacturers also in the selvage have just the single solid colors. Um, these are represented as cherries, but it's often like a little circle. Um, so what I like to do is I like to keep um, either solids or 
monochromatic fabrics in my stash. So my favorite to use is uh, Moda Grunge and there's other similar fabrics out there. Um, if you look at just about any fabric line, a lot of the smallest prints in the fabric line are also good to use for lining in my opinion. Um, and so I'll try to match a, a color from the fabric or you can look at again like at the little salvage dots um, and choose say like a Moda grunge fabric that I have in my stash or a similar blender type fabric and so that's what I'll usually use for lining. So I feel like a lot of times I can save money by not necessarily buying um, an exterior fabric and a coordinating lining fabric. Maybe I'll just buy, just because not not necessarily every fabric that I buy will turn into a bag. Sometimes I'll use it for something else. And so if I only just buy like the exterior fabric and then rely on my stash of monochromatic fabrics or Moda Grunge fabrics for the lining, then I'll, I'll always have something I can use. So my Moda Grunge, I have uh, a rainbow array of colors or if you like solids. Um, I, I like using solids for linings as well by having lots of colors of solids that I also use for other things as quilts like quilts um, then I can easily match my exterior fabric and just pull something else that I already have in my stash. Nancy says I asked the group when you um, get the four pack video bundy do you get the videos with it I'm having a hard time finding them can you please show me on your site so um, yes the four pack video bundle which um, was previously available. Um, the offer ended on May 20th, but um, it contained four PDF patterns and four videos. So what you do need to do to access the videos is just log into your account on my website. And uh, to do that, you can go to sosweetness.com. Um, there's a little graphic of um, a person's upper torso, the silhouette, um, on the right-hand side of the website. Or you can just go to directly to sosweetness.com backslash my dash account and you can find the account there as well. If you're having trouble locating where you need to sign in, um, you can email me and I'm happy to direct you with a direct link. Um, thank you, Danny. Uh, Sarah at sosweetness.com and that's where you can email me if you ever need help locating any of your purchases like your patterns or videos. Did you mention the video instructions on the website? Um, Access the link? I didn't, but I, I have a link for that so it's a little bit longer than... That's like my what I feel like I can say on the screen. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth says, for the Blazing Star bag, is it really necessary to glue the zipper down before top stitching the inside of the front pocket? I didn't do it and was able to top stitch just fine. So um, that gluing portion um, for, I think what you're talking about is when you're adding this front pocket to, I call this the front cutout. The glue just makes it easier so when you're top stitching, you don't have to worry about the fabric edges flipping over and then you getting a raw edge on the inside of your front pocket. So if you're able to do that without the gluing, that's completely fine. Um, it's just a step that I found for me personally was helpful to get everything um, kind of locked down into place prior to the top stitching. Donna says, Sarah, do you use magic pins? What's different about these pins? Um, I'm going to just grab them. They're just right over here on this other table. Okay, Danny, can you switch to the overhead camera one more time? Okay, so here's the magic pins. Um, they, yeah, sure, you can zoom in. So we sell these in the shop, so if you go to my website, uh, we have a huge Notion section. The magic pins are part of the Notion section. The great things about these pins are you can actually iron over the tips so they're not plastic and they won't melt like other uh, I don't know what they're called ballpoint head pins um, if you need to you can iron over this or if you accidentally touch this blue portion um, it won't melt um, I think it's I don't want to lie but I, I thought it was silicone but I could be mistaken but anyway yeah you can iron over these and I use these magic pins for portions of the bag that I can't get to with Wonder Clips. So for instance, maybe when I'm making a zipper pocket um, and I just need to kind of spear a couple pins over the top and bottom of the zipper pocket opening before I stitch it in place, um, I use the, the Wonder, the magic pins for that. Oh, thank you, Danny. So there's where you need to go if you would like instructions on how to access your purchase patterns and videos. That's the, the link right there. 
um, thank you very much. So if you're watching this, uh, if you want to check that out after the show or if you're watching a recording of the show, you can just pause it real quick and then uh, type that in, link into your web browser. Kathy says, I'm joining late. Do you have that cutter on your website? Yes, the link is in the description. We have the left-handed rotary cutter, which is the blue handle, and then the right-handed, which is the the red handle over here. We've got both in stock on the website. Joyce says, would a flip lock work on the Acorn Wallet? Um, yes, uh, a flip lock or a twist lock will work on the Acorn Wallet if you'd like to use that instead of the magnetic snap or the pearl snap. Um, Terry says, what was that curved ruler, please? It was, the. where did I put it? There we go. The pattern company is Color Girl Quilts and the website is colorgirlquilts.com and it's the classic curves ruler. So great for drunkards, paths, or other things. She has a lot of patterns on her website that also work with this uh, ruler over here. Diane says, what is the black and gold fabric uh, bag on the shelf behind your right shoulder? The damask pattern print. Ah. <coughs> Sorry, that probably seems kind of crazy where I have to be like, all right, my right hand, but like uh, on camera, it's sort of mirror image. So when I look to my right on camera, it's like actually the left. <laughs> this is the original uh, coalition bag. Um, this fabric is a canvas fabric. Uh, the designer is a Chino and it was made for Coca Fabrics. That's K-O-K-K-A. -K -K you might be able, it's out of print, but you might be able to find some on Etsy and I really like it because it's a, gold metallic print and I use some sort of, I don't even know where I got this uh, gold vinyl, but I don't know if you can see, but I added a zipper panel and it's kind of um, shedding a little bit along the edges of the vinyl, but I still really like it. So that's why I decided to put it on the set. Um, the coalition bag pattern comes with two sizes, this size, which is the handbag size, and also a duffel size, which is a really great size duffel bag. Uh, Wendy says, love grunge. What's your favorite color? Um, the names are escaping me right now besides pear, which I must have used a few times. So pretty sure that's a, a color pear. Debbie says, Danny, you guys are such a great team. It's no wonder you have such a following. Thank you so much, Debbie. Yeah, Danny's so great with um, everything. Not yeah, everything, but also you know, jumping in with the different camera zooms. and. I cheered over you when you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Carla says, I just wanted to say that I noticed you have made additional improvements to your website and they are fantastic, easy to use, love all the visuals. Thank you so much. I'm always looking to make improvements to make uh, our website or other customer experiences as smooth and seamless as possible. So if you ever have a suggestion for us, let me know. You can always email me. A lot of improvements we've made on the website over the years are from suggestions that we've received via email. So de definitely, I am always listening. Kathy says, sorry if I missed it, but is the zipper tool you demonstrated available in your shop? Does it come in pink? Uh, we currently only have it in, I think they are actually discontinuing this color. I forgot, they might've been calling it Bahama Blue, but I'm not really sure. Um, so once we sell out of these, this color has gone. Um, you can find this as well as the Martelli cutter in the Notion section. I've directly linked to both of these in the description of tonight's show. And if you're not familiar, we also have a what's new section on the website. So if you go to under our the products tab, thank you under the products tab on our website, uh, there's a sub tab for what's new. And every time I add new things to the website, um, those populate in that what's new section. So these will be there as well. But I have linked to them directly in the description of the show, just so you don't have to go searching around. You can find them immediately by clicking the, the link in the description. So I normally wear contacts. Um, on the weekends, I'm often wearing glasses, but when I, especially when I ride, I'm always wearing contacts. And I would say for the last year, year and a half, my contacts have felt really scratchy when I put them in my eyes. I went to the eye doctor and I tried a bunch of different contact lenses and the ones that I've used for a few years now, she said were the best ones. So I stuck with those, but I was still having difficulty, especially in my left eye. And so I thought, all right, let's uh, 
eliminate things. Um, I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I do wear some, including liquid eyeliner. So I tried to go with a different, um, I feel like it looks different, maybe it doesn't. I tried to go with a different eyeliner tonight, which is more of a less inky. I like using natural products, and so I went through, I like the Skin Deep website for choosing natural or healthier cosmetics and skincare type things. And so I tried to find a different eyeliner. I noticed it doesn't really look like my previous eyeliners, but I don't know if you noticed a difference or not, but I'm so far so good. My eyes don't feel itchy. And I think um, it was a good call uh, trying to change up my skincare products to make my eyes feel a little bit better. So we'll see how long this lasts for. But um, yeah, I feel like I look a little different, but maybe different's a good thing if I can feel more comfortable at least. <laughs> Were there more questions, Danny, or was that it on the questions? All right, Danny's calling in on the questions, so I apologize if I did not get your question live. Um, I will be back again next Sunday. Danny will be joining me on the show next Sunday, and we'll have another episode of Bag Lab, I think. We're going to be talking about, Danny and I talked about it. Um, I'm going to be screen sharing my computer screen, and I'm going to be talking about um, how to print PDF patterns. I know it seems super simple, um, but we've been getting um, several emails about printing PDF patterns and things um, going awry. So I'm going to be talking about that on the show next Sunday and sharing my screen on my computer so we can have a discussion about printing PDF patterns, how to make sure you're printing them at the correct size so that they don't uh, print out either shrunken or had a couple issues in the past week with the new Bar Marlin backpack pattern, uh, the front pocket, uh, printing out with jagged edges for a couple of people, not most people, but just a couple. So we're going to be talking about printing PDF patterns um, using Adobe Reader on the show next Sunday. So um, one last thing to get to is the giveaway. So I'm going to be giving away a $50 gift certificate to my website, so sweetness.com. And uh, the giveaway winner is randomly drawn out of all of the comments we get on tonight's show. Uh, for from Facebook and YouTube, we compile all those comments and you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show. And I have an extra question for you to give you an extra method of um, entry for the giveaway. Um, I wanted to know what your favorite book is. So let me know in the comments what your favorite book is. It can be fiction, nonfiction, whatever your favorite is. Let me know in the comments. So thank you very much for tuning into Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.